Russo's, who are the owners of 210 Endicott Street. Uh, this address has been in the Del Russo family for generations, it's for decades and decades. It's, it's the home of Bob Del Russo, who was here with me, and his son Michael, who's a, a licensed contractor, licensed uh, uh, construction supervisor, uh, to do the uh, construction on the job. What's proposed is that the, the existing uh, two-family with a basement and, and a, a, a pendant garage be demolished and in its place uh, a five-story uh, four-family uh, house is proposed. Uh, the relief, uh, the application went to the uh, ISD and uh, it was reported back that there were five variances that were required. Uh, those variances were the uh, floor area ratio uh, was uh, excessive because anytime you can do anything in this neck of the woods, the floor area ratio is always a problem. Uh, no matter what you do, you're going to run into floor, ratio, uh, floor area ratio problems. And as well, the rear yard uh, was not sufficient and requires a variance. And again, uh, that's more a, a comment on the, on the, the neighborhood uh, than on uh, this particular project. The, the other uh, is a groundwater conservation overlay district. And, and when I finish talking about the parking, I'm going to give you to uh, Michael Della Russo, who can, who can explain that. Uh, and the last two variances were uh, for off-street parking was insufficient and the parking design was insufficient. You may have noticed I, I passed around uh, some flyers. And all of the flyers, except, except, except for the back page, have a uh, three-car garage. Um, and in reality, what, what's going to happen is it's going to wind up being four cars in the garage parked two tandem. Uh, it doesn't alleviate <coughs> the need for a variance, but it does get an additional car off the street. Uh, when the Delarusos first decided they wanted to go ahead with this project, they did it the right way. They sat down and talked to their neighbors. The, uh, the Pizzutos and Clancy are here. Uh, Director Butter, who uh, the Delarusos, uh, Bob explained, we need to make a larger curb cut so we can fit three cars in there. And they said, geez, you know, we really would rather you didn't do that because it takes a takes away a parking space on the street. And so instead, uh, there won't be any increase in the curb cut and in and, and actuality uh, taking four cars uh, parking on the property as opposed to what happened originally proposed as, as three. So when you look at uh, when you look at the uh, plan that's been submitted and, cir and is circulating, uh, you'll note there are three cars, but in, in reality, if you look at the last page, uh, it'll show you that how the four car tandem setup uh, is, going to, is going to take place. Um, so with that, I'll I'll give it to Michael in terms of uh, commenting on the uh, on the groundwater conservation overlay district. Hi everybody, my name is Mike Delarusso. I'm general contractor. And my father, so if anybody has any questions. Okay, so we finished your presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, any abiders here that would like to speak first? Go right ahead. Name and uh, my name is Denise Clancy, and we've been living, my family and I have been living next door, direct to Butters, for 10 years now. Um, and I have to say, having gone through this process before with somebody else, they've done it the right way. They pulled all the direct to Butters together. We all had an opportunity to discuss the plans and to make some suggestions and to talk about our common rat problems, which we all have. But we're, you know, we, we all kind of got into a conversation about that. And, um, and to talk about how the whole process would unfold, particularly since uh, my husband and I, we work out of our home office, so it gets a little, it could get a little noisy, and they've been terrific. So I'm here to say, although my husband couldn't make it tonight, he has another obligation, I'm here to say that our family supports their efforts. And we look forward to having a Della Russo living next door to us at some point. We love their mothers. So. Several. Yeah, well, okay, several would be fine. Thank you. Uh, any other letters? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the brothers. Any questions? Bob? Uh, uh, Michael, just yeah. give me a height requirement. Uh, uh, we're we're at 51 it. feet, so we're under the height requirement. Oh, I don't read the, uh, I couldn't read the plans. So. Say that again? I couldn't read the plans. So. Oh, yeah, we're at, we're at, um, we're actually at 50 feet, 4 inches. All right, thank you. David? 
Yeah. Um, presently, there's a, a home there. It may be a single family home. Single family home. And then next to it, there's a garage. Yes. And this building will cover both of those. What where the land that both of those are on. Right. Are those separate parcels today, or are they one parcel? And in either case, what are the FARs today? I, I disagree with the statement that FAR always has to be changed. It doesn't always have to be changed. FAR in this neighborhood generally gets at how high a development can be or how high a building should be on a property. So for instance, an FAR of four means a building of four stories is allowed that covers the entire site. Uh, so is it one parcel or two, and what are the FARs? Currently, currently it, it appears to be one parcel with two addresses. So it will be two, I think it's 210, 212, 210, 212, and about three. And if you look at the A3 page of the, of the handout, it, it shows you what is there now and what is proposed to be there in terms of uh, how this building was fit in. What is the current FAR and what is the proposed FAR? Um, I think that the FAR is three. Do you know for sure? I'm to tell you the truth, I'm not positive. You can't answer that question. FAR, by the way, is for area ratio. Sorry. Uh, any other questions? Uh, go ahead. Uh, let's start off How many feet below the garage is the current one? Excuse me? How many feet below the garage floor? For the garage floor, there will, there will, there will be a, a, a pressure slash for it, so there won't be any basement yeah. below the garage floor. No, where is the water below? It hasn't been tested yet, ma'am. It, it hasn't been tested. It won't be tested until we're fully approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Do you anticipate how many? Do you anticipate as a contract? Well, currently, currently, under the existing home, there is a basement, and that basement goes down about eight feet. So um, under the garage, there is there is no basement, so we wouldn't know until we have the board testing done. Um, okay, uh, Jason. I need approval. What what's the time frame for the duration of the project? Actual construction actual construction will take six to eight months, but you know it probably total from now until then will probably be a year a year's process. And, and by the way, the FAR for the for the property is three three point zero. So it will, are you covering the entire parcel with the building? Not the entire parcel. It will have a, an exterior stairwell that will lead to the passageway in the back. So if it's not covering the entire parcel, I assume you're looking for an FAR that's somewhere between four and five. So you'll be going from three to, to four to five. Right, right. Okay. Do you have questions? Uh, I remember seeing something to the effect that the roof deck is for the use of the top apartment only, is yes. that correct? How are you going to enforce that? <clears throat> the, uh, the, the building is an elevated building, and as you enter the elevator, each key will leak, only open you up to your floor. So the only way to get to, to the roof is, is to have the penthouse key. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nikki Rath here from Prince Street. Um, I don't understand what the part of the design that's to the right of the doorway is for. The cars. It's, so, if you look at how the cars are portrayed on the, uh, that's in the, the garage. Door. Yeah. It looks like 16 cars. It looks like what? 16 cars. No, no, no it's only three. It looks like three, actually. Not three. three. And then, what's this back here? It's just, that's all one garage door now. So yeah. this is what we'll Oh, this is a garage door. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Door. Thank you. Um, I, I just have one question. What street view? Um, you know, it shows your building in the context of the buildings uh, meaning the two left, none of which is at the same height. The, it looks like the closest one is maybe 42 feet or so. I'm curious uh, how... Um, the rest of the street looks in terms of buildings that are at 50 foot high. We're at the end of the street. The last building on the street is, a, is a, currently a garage that's being used as a parking lot, and that's at 
uh, what would you say, mid-rise level, like two stories high. And across the street, there are two, three, three buildings that are actually following them when I'm going to be Oh, yeah. wow. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. If the back side of your building have a view at non Washington Street, is it going to have the same copy effect and like that on non Washington? There'll, there, will be, um, there, there will be emergency exits that lead to what will appear to be a balcony, but it's more of a stairwell. Just one quick question, just curious. The, the India building, that's not Washington Street. There's no other building on the other side. There's a building behind us. Oh, it, it used to be the Bruno family building. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? All right, uh, do we have a motion to vote? Stephanie, second. Thank you, Jason. Okay, uh, we're going to use the first ballot, which is uh, yellow, I believe. Be very careful. Usually, we have support at top and oppose at the bottom. We got reversed. So, if you support, circle the bottom one. And if you oppose, circle the top. Thirty-three support, and just three opposed. So, we'll write a letter.